Anyway, we're moving on. And uh, we spoke about uh, the large number of injuries that we've seen uh, in rugby in recent weeks. And it seems, guys, that a lot of them are knee-related. And, John, you've just had another knee surgery, so you know all about this. Bros, you've had a couple. Sorry. Bobs, you've had a couple. Thank um, you. We don't have a doctor in the house, but I think with the combined knowledge mm -hmm. uh, of knee injuries in the house, Mr. De Villiers, um, we're seeing a lot of knee injuries in particular, and, and it's, it's ligaments that seemingly are taking, uh, bearing the brunt at the moment. There is a big debate as to what the cause is. Is it players getting heavier? Because you can't necessarily strengthen ligaments, can you? Or even yeah, a tendon. Yeah. Well, or tendons. Look, again, yeah. none of us are doctors. And we don't have those <laughs> answers. But I think you know, what we need to understand, injuries are part of rugby, part mm. and partial of rugby. So uh, it's not often that you go through a, a whole career of not one injury, except if you Percy Montgomery who never made a tackle. <laughs> Aren't you happy birthday today as well? Oh, um, yeah. But knee injuries are, I think, very, uh, at the moment, there's quite a few mm. of them. And, and I think the, the worrisome one is, is those non-impact injuries. And those are usually where you see a guy running, suddenly he collapses, goes to the ground, and he, and he, f and, and he can't finish the game. Yeah. And those are usually your ACL injuries. That keeps you out six to nine months, and it's very difficult to, to come back from that. So, um, and, there's look, big, and there's big names, John. Like, I mean, Israel Dag, you look at that, and, and you think the influence that will have in terms of their campaign and the, the British Irish Lions. and the British Irish Lions, especially when he's coming down when, uh, when they have to pick up for, for the international season. So, there is those crucial injuries that happen, and most of the time with the injuries, especially the knees, it's a long layoff. Yeah, you know, especially those that I said are the. Um, your, your non-contact injuries, because mm -hmm. uh, those are usually then ACL, where you know it's a it's a move of uh, or a change in in, in in direction of movement, mm -hmm. and then suddenly you know the weight going the different way and the ACL goes. Um, the others that are very common is your MCL, your your medial collateral ligament, which is obviously the one on the inside. Those will usually be uh, a contact related, yeah. where there's a hit from the side. Uh, getting tackled from the side of the knee, the knee goes inwards and the medial ligaments get, gets injured. But, but um, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, f from experience, I think Bob's the same for yeah. you. What usually happens, you get it once yeah. and then there's a reoccurrence. We see the same with Marcel Kutsia now um, injuring his, uh, his knee again. Um, Mulder the Scudder there did, we yeah. see as well injury. That's, again, contact related, so you're probably looking at an at a MCL if it is the knee. Um, well, that was actually an ankle injury. Guys, that one. you guys have been there. Bros, talk to me about the confidence that a player loses due to injury. You can come back, you can be back at full fitness. How confident are you that it's not going to happen again? Well, How does it affect it, your it's game? It's very, very difficult. And the one mm. thing, I mean, John's a great example to have here is the condition that these guys go through to do the rehabilitation and get themselves back. I spoke to Jimmy Wright this morning, who's done the condition. He's the biokineticist that works with the Sharks. Yeah. He says Marcel was in fantastic condition. They worked with him up until November last year. He went over to Ulster in Northern Ireland. He was in great condition. So the, the condition of these players, don't underestimate the way, the, the way these guys have been prepared today. There, there's so much attention to detail. The Sharks players, I know they've got a, a management app that they've got to fill in information every morning before they, as they wake up, how I'm feeling, I'm a bit stiff, I'm a bit sore. Um, they fill this in. The, shark, the management of the Sharks sits in their meeting at 7.30 in the morning. They're already getting fed information on how Jean-Luc Dupree is feeling. He's feeling a bit stiff, he's a bit sore. Yeah. They're conditioning these guys and the speed at with which they are playing the game at the moment is huge. So the, the quad gets well conditioned, the muscle gets yeah. well built, the hammies, the whole compartment around the knee. The problem is, you can't, no matter, you can't get your meniscus, you can't get your ligaments, they, yeah. they're the, the same strength as they were before you did the conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. So you get all that right, but you can't strengthen that. Well, Albert, I mean, we were talking about Marcel Couture. We spoke about the fact that uh, he is one of those guys on the cusp of qualifying to play for the Springboks. It's a big issue, been a big talking point. What does it mean now? Yeah, it's an interesting one because on the 1st of July, the 30 cap rule will come in and players who do not have at least 30 caps for the Springboks will not be able to be selected for the rugby championship if they are based overseas, as Marcel Kutsia is. So, because of this knee injury, unfortunately, during the June test window, he will not be able to add to his 28 caps and potentially, since he signed to be in Ireland for another two years, might only be able to run out in the green and gold if nothing changes 
in 2019 again. Of course, he's not the only South African player who suffered injuries besides uh, Israel Dag and Nehemel Naskada and, and a few of the, the Kiwis. We've also had a whole list of uh, South African players getting injured so far this season. You know, we've got Renil Lichu, we've got Oxen Shea, we've got Howard Nisi, we've got Sergio Peterson. Um, Braz, I want to check with you. Yep. How much control is there as far as the playing surface is concerned? Well, because obviously that makes a very big difference. It's a, it's a point that I wanted to, to, to raise, and it's a very important one. I was speaking to Jimmy Wright this morning. He said there's a study, and they say that they, when you start mixing your grass types in your, on your turf, you, the increased incidence of those kind of injuries goes up. And if you look at where it happened with Marcel Kutsi at Ravenhill in, in Northern Ireland, Belfast, that pitch there's got different grass varieties in it. You look at the one that we just saw now, the Toyota Stadium in, 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 in Bloemfontein. Yeah, Boves, there's, lots, there's lots of different mm. grasses in that. So it's a, it's, it's a study that I don't know where he's got it from, but he said it's a, it is something that you've got to bear in mind. When you've got these different grasses in the stadiums, it can have an effect on your knee. Jean, I don't know, you've had more knee operations than, it's got than a, anyone. I think you've had seven or so. Yeah, no, look, it's... Um, uh, it's one of those things. It's yeah. rugby, eh? and um, you know, mine was unfortunately most of mine was actually impact related. So where I was caught in a difficult position, uh, and too much basic uh, uh, weight coming from the one side, and my knee and my leg just not strong enough to be able to take it, and then you you sort of blast your whole knee. I think Howard and uh, yeah. uh one is a is a it's fantastic. Horrific. If you look here, oh. where, where it's very difficult to see that, and there's nothing he can do about that you know it's a um, it, it's terrible what happened to him and it takes a hell of a long time to actually come back from that Bob's recovery there, there always is a prognosis we always talk about the fact that the player's got four weeks six sure. weeks eight weeks whatever it is doesn't that put pressure added pressure as a player to get back on the field it's, uh, I think the, what really breaks through is that they say nine months but it's every second it's every minute, it's every hour, and then 24 hours on and on and on. And the whole thing of not being able, of not having the chance to actually execute and do what you really do enjoy. Yeah. Uh, and then the psychological effect, you know, yeah. once you come back, do you want to have strapping on your knee or you don't want to have a strapping on your knee? How strong was your cervix machine that, and all of that? That's why I raise it because, John, we were talking about your injury now and your path to recovery as a non-professional mm -hmm. sports person. Yeah. It's very different. It's happening at your own pace, I suppose. The pressure is very different. How do you feel? Are you, re it, it, are you actually recovering faster no, I, than when you were playing? It is very different because you need to understand that once you're in a professional environment, you know, there's expectations that they are paying you as a, uh, um, as a player yeah. and they want you back on the field because you're an asset. So there's always that pressure of coming back from the coaches, from the players, from the administrators and you as a player also want to get back yes. on the field and do what you love. So um, there is that pressure whereas if you're not in that, you know, in my situation now, I purely go on how it feels. When it feels better, then I'll push it a little bit further. If it's not, then I'll just postpone for another week. And then also what you need to understand is once you start playing, oh, it's a totally different yeah, world yeah. than actually just rehabbing and, and, and strengthening it. So a guy like Andre Pollard, for example, yeah. you know, it'll take two, three months for him just to get his groove back. Mm. And I think the fact that he's playing already, and, he, and you know, know there's, there's a lot of pressure on an oak like that, but it takes time and, and he'll be back to his best... Um, with no time, in, yeah. You know, in no time. If but they do just we manage stick players correctly? Should we have pushed a clay like Andre straight into starting and <clears> captaining <throat> for the Bulls? When he's come back from, he had the knee and then he had the shoulder. Should you be eased into it? Back in the day when we were playing, we had club rugby. We went and played a few games for the club. You started, played for the B side, and then you, you came through. But yeah, look, there's always, there's always that debate of if you're going to play, mm. if you're ready to play, you know, whether it's club or whether it's... Uh, you're still going to play. Uh, yeah, for, the, for, the, for your provincial side. Mm. Yeah. Um, if you're up for it, you know... There's a risk both ways. Because yeah. Patrick Lambie is also in a situation where he's injured again. And if he does come back to the field, he'll be in the reckoning for a Springbok place. He's going to be under pressure to be selected for the French um, series. Again, it's the management. Should players yeah, have bigger I, say? I'm, I'm, I'm more of the fact that I'd rather be chucked in into the deep end coming back straight yeah. from injury because they no into middle, that, straight, into that environment. straight into that environment because that's where you want to perform this but is where are you talking about playing 80 minutes bobs are you talking about I'm, getting physical and I'm, getting looking, onto I'm looking at it you think to yourself Perhaps you, you can, go you go play against like a Raiders side in a club game and yeah. the guys gun for you yeah. whilst now you're going to find out there's other different ways that people are actually defending that kind of lower levels but at least it's something that you're used yeah, to dealing with. look it's different for every player i think it's where you feel comfortable and that's where players need to be 
open uh, with with a coaching mm. team, with a fitness group, yeah. and that's where the trust really needs to come out and say, True. well, this is how I feel, this well, is my best case scenario, and then let's see how that how important, can How important that. is having that team around you, that Massive. The, the biokinesis, the Massive. physio that's been working with you, taking you through that rehab to give that confidence, because yeah. you can work you can work mentally on your mm. what's happening up there, you can work on your muscles, mm. obviously the tendons... But bros, I mean, for us who've never played professionally, how much of a say does a player have? in the length or duration of rehab do you have a say do you say to the doctor yes i'm well i'm feeling all right but here i might not be it's, it, it got a tendency of rugby players trying to come in a bit earlier than yeah. you're normally supposed to so uh, most of the time they're actually holding you back they're holding you back they're holding you back you're busy trying and to you're chase rearing so you're ready to go and then they say okay fine let's be more conservative about this let's give you nine months well, it's an interesting chat and, uh, you know, we do use the social media space and on Facebook, uh, perhaps it's something we can continue discussing, uh, just not enough time on the show. But, uh, yeah, Alma, it's, uh, it's an interesting one, um, but super rugby. We've lost a couple of pretty good players. Fortunately, there are still some South Africans doing well statistically. Exactly.